total five was an entire year in the making. It started out very minimalist, and from there, I just made it more and more functional. The base is carved out from a one-piece 5mm T700 carbon fiber. Being one piece takes more time to machine and creates more wastage. This is why it's not common for frames going over 3 inches to be this way. But being one piece makes the frame very stiff. Think of a hypercar. The chassis is usually a one piece carbon fiber monocoque. This is why I coined the term exotic. I worked with various manufacturers just to bring the price down to a reasonable point. In an effort to lose every gram available, hardware is at a minimum. TPU prints are optimized and the screws are all lightweight titanium with a stylish burnt blue finish which is almost half the weight of steel. So I'm really not holding back here. So what is a cinematic racer? P5 was inspired by my entire FPV journey. It's got a little bit of DNA from each of my favorite quads. First up, the iFlight Mach R5. I really enjoyed how overpowered it was at 335 grams with motors that belonged on a 6 inch. I wanted to share what I was experiencing with you, so I replaced the shark fin TPU and put an action camera mount on it just so I can record the 4K footage and sound. <laughs> 225 kilometers per hour full throttle runs. Though the quad had some downsides. I mean, it is a race frame, so there's not much space. Through the goggles, the quad had huge props in view, and when I flew it, I would totally run out of room very quickly. I also really enjoyed flying my Emacs Baby Hawk HD 3.5 inch. It flew so well and was extremely acrobatic. Sometimes I wondered, what would it be like if it was a 5 inch? I even emailed Emacs and told them, can you make this into a 5 inch? They said, yeah, maybe. The only thing I hated about it was, didn't have enough motor protection from a crash. I must have replaced five motors on this thing. It proved too expensive, so now it just sits in a box. I also have various 5-inch freestyle frames designed from all our FPV legends. They're all built like tanks, all with props in view, and meant to be used with a GoPro on top. Sure, some of them you can get a dead cat version, but usually it came at a performance penalty, or just made the quad even wider and less compact to gap stuff. So removing all of the unnecessary bulk, Proto 5 can be built 30 to 50 grams lighter, than your typical 5 inch tank freestyle frame. With less weight, this allows you to carry the extra gear you want and still shred the cinematic environment. Throughout the year, I also watched my friend Kibby play with his Insta360 dual lens camera and do some fun effects. He created videos where you can move your phone around and see a 360 degree view of the video or even choose your composition, such as film the quad itself or a certain angle. I thought this was nice, but only if the battery wasn't in the way and if the drone was pretty to look at. Then it made me wonder, why not have multiple ways to mount an action camera? So to achieve this, in Proto 5, you can undermount your battery like a race quad, which frees up room on the top. Or you can choose to mount your battery on top, like a freestyle frame. So this makes P5 even more convenient for shooting your creative videos, making the way you want it. As for the aesthetics, I'm in love with the form language of exotic vehicles. As an industrial designer, function and form is always married and equal. It matters how it performs, and it must look the part too. So now you know what Proto FPV and Proto 5 is all about. Let's build it. Oh man. So the first thing we're going to do is put in the LED light bars. So we have two of them here and they're not the same. One of them is actually shallower and the other one is deeper. So put the deeper one with the base and the shallower one goes with the top plate. So for the base, this is the front. Usually I like to put it this way. What I would do is shove it into the hole first. So this might help just like the back of your tool and just kind of like snaps in. You can take your LED lights and put them into the mount. I also included extra wiring just in case you need it. To put the LED light in, it's going to be face down. So these LEDs are customizable in Betaflight and you can change it into different colors. It makes the build a little more fun. Okay. All right, so we have two LEDs. I'm just going to give you a tip on how to wire it to the flight controller. So just imagine my thumb as the flight controller. Flight controller wires go to D in on the first LED and then you wire D out 
to the next LEDs D in. This way it shows Betaflight there's two LEDs. That way you can give them separate colors. So the feet, it's pretty easy to figure out. This is the front and the rounder ones are for the rear. So all you have to do is just slip them on, kind of like slippers. And from this point, you can take your M3 by nine screws and just slightly screw them all in until they're kind of poking slightly out of the ends of the holes. So this frame features multiple ways to put your electronics in it, starting from the front. So we have 30 by 30. If you want to use AIO, we got 25 by 25. And if you want to use a mini stack, then we got 20 by 20. And as for the rear, we have M2 25 by 25 and M2 20 by 20. And we also have a bonus area, the top plate. So these grills look cool, but you can actually fit 20 by 20 electronics. So if you plan to stack a VTX in the back or use an AIO, I included some universal hardware to make it easier for you. If the screws are too long, after bolting everything down, you can take like a metal clipper and just trim them really easily because they're so thin. But today I'm gonna put a full size stack in here. So I'm gonna use M3 by 21 titanium screws and secure them with M3 thin nuts. All right, so this is the bottom and we're just gonna slide one at a time and I'm just going to thread in the thin nut. Just crank it down a tiny bit. So before you put the stack on, put the base LED light on first. And as a precaution, take a small square of electrical tape and cover up the connections. Also, I'm going to thread in some M3 nylon nuts, which will put some space between the stack and the LED light. Nice and finger tight. All right, so now I'm gonna put the stack on. So usually the stack you purchase will include these M3 nylon nuts. I'm just gonna secure it now. So I'm just gonna push a finger down in each corner and just screw it down finger tight. And we're just gonna turn it until your fingers start slipping. So after you tighten that up, just check the bottom of the board and make sure that electrical tape is still there. So there's no chance it's gonna short against your board. So the motors I'm using, they're T-Motor F60 Pro. These are really explosive and they're about 32 grams. So they're relatively lightweight. The only thing I don't like about them is I had to print these TPU discs to prevent vibrations to the props. I don't know if they still have this issue, but the grips that come on these motors, like they don't really dig into the props. So the prop would actually make these vibrating sounds. I made this TPU disc, screwed the prop on tight and it doesn't do that anymore. They work great now. Just a heads up if you decide to purchase this motor. Otherwise, it looks really sick. So you see how I have the screws just sticking out a little? This helps hold it in place while you bolt them in. You want it so the wire's going the length of the outer arms. You see this is the rear motor, just lining up with the outer arm. Just some more tips before you go cutting motor wires. Make sure your wires are long enough. You're gonna run the rear motor wires on the outer arm and it's gonna go past the standoff and through the middle and to the ESC. One of my pet peeves with some of my frames was there's just nowhere to put the cap. So I made sure there was a nice generous space. So yeah, if you wanna put a big cap, go ahead. But I think you would have more trouble to plug in your DJI plug. If you wanted to run your LiPo strap underneath, it would be harder to do. So I would totally use a smaller cap, something like this. Look how much smaller it is. And check out the length of my X-T60. It's not very long at all. It's only about from the battery leads to, uh, let, let's say to the end of the cap here. It's about 60 millimeters. It keeps it nice and light. If you decide to undermount the LiPo, look at this. All you have to do is pull it down, stick it through this hole, and there you go. It's ready for the undermount battery as well. And it's long enough. It's time to fix these motor wires. What I like using is this fabric tape. It's just lightweight and simple. So now we're gonna install the O3 air unit quick release holders. And if you do decide to mount the air unit upside down on the top plate, you can use M2 by five screws instead. Now we are going to press in these nuts. Do you see there's like a hex hole in here? Match it up to the 20 by 20 hole. You might have to shove the wires a bit, put the screw in there until it's finger tight. 
basically now you can just put it in there and I'm gonna take it out, pull it out. Take your remaining M3 by nine titanium screws and put it through the bottom here and put in your M3 by 22 standoff. Be careful not to pinch the wires while you screw in the standoff by hand. So now we're gonna slip on the rear antenna mount. So at the front of the drone, you can fit a mortal T in here or equivalent. Uh, you could always modify the file if you don't like the circle, but yeah, you just, uh, just push it in there nice and tight. Push in the other side of the camera mount in. Now you can mount your DJI camera. Just make sure it's not upside down. Take a look at the logo. So just match up the holes and put in your M2 by four screw. So I'm just gonna put one in the bottom here and that way you can actually slide this back and forth if you want. Let's put in the air unit. Finally, this wire will just run across the top, plug it into your DJI plug and play. So it'll plug right in and just pop in the antenna. You can see I have my Nano RX just dangling in the front here and just zip tie it to this standoff here. Okay. Now we're going to put the top LED into the light bar, which goes into this top plate. So you'll notice the fitment of this light bar is much looser. If you feel like it's too loose, take any generic double sided tape that you can find at home or the dollar store. All you need is a small strip and just line it up on one side, then it'll fit much nicer and still be easy to remove and if it stops being sticky just replace that little strip and just like the base plate just cut a small square of electrical tape cover the connections there okay so now put on the top plate i made this led wire probably a little too long <laughs> i'm just going to coil up in the front take the remaining m3 by 9 titanium screws and just put them in So in the kit, we have Protostrap M. So this strap can fit your typical 6S batteries for this class of quad. So now we're gonna need some sticky battery LiPo pad. We're gonna use Tessagrip, which is included with every frame. So the shape I really like to put on this frame is this rhombus shape. So remove the plastic so it's easier to cut. And I'm just going to cut along these lines here to create that rhombus shape. So try to hold your scissor nice and level just have fun with it. You don't have to do this shape. You can do any shape you want. I don't want to stick it over this light bar, so I'm just going to cut another split in between. So before we put it on, usually I like to use some rubbing alcohol and just clean the top plate a little bit. Nice. All right, so now the build's pretty much complete. It's time to plug her in and check for magic smoke. So what I like to use is this Gap RC smoke stopper. And once you plug it into the XT60 and plug in your LiPo, check for this green light. And if the green light's not on, unplug right away. That means something's wrong in shorting. I'm not gonna plug it in all the way. I'm just going to lightly put it in. All right. Nice, so it went through all the ESC chimes and I can just continue to plug it in all the way. So from this point on, if you use similar specifications to this build, such as 2207 to 2306 motors, 6S, and similar types of props, and if you run a 32-bit stack like me, you can go to the protofpv.com website. Links are all in the description below. You can go to the support page, click downloads, click Proto 5, and click pit and filter tune. And go ahead and copy all these parameters into your beta flight. The props that I like to use on a powerful quad like this is racing props. So the ones I use are HQ Racing R38, and I like to run them in the props out direction. So sometimes in a really bad accident, your battery might move like this and your XT60 might actually hit the prop. What I like to do is zip tie it to the actual strap. That way it's always kind of like sitting like this. There's no chance that the prop will strike it. Sometimes a prop can like cut this open and create a power surge. All right, let's weigh her up. Okay, so she weighs 361.56 grams. 
So keep in mind, I got a full size 55 amp stack here. I also have the O3 air unit in here, which is about 39G. Imagine how much lighter it could be if you used the AIO, analog, walk snail, HD0. You could probably get this around 310G possibly. So there's actually a lot of potential with this frame to make it perform the way it looks. So included in the kit are these two mounts. So I have a really cool shark fin, which allows you to flip over easier in turtle mode, especially if you decide to mount the battery on the bottom. And I also included one action camera mount. Keep in mind these accessories can be bolted in all four corners. I'm gonna walk you through that entire feature set right now. What these are are a tri-mount. I have a press nut in each corner of the frame, also on the bottom. So just take your M2 by five screw and screw it in right into the press nut. So you can see in the back here, we have the same tri-mount and you could put an action camera on the back there. And if you undermount your battery instead, you have this area nice and clean. You could have your like ultra wide angle and just get a nice third person view of the quad. So here's the action camera mount. If you need more, you can buy it in the spares section of Proto5 on the website. So I've included this M5 by 20 titanium screw and a aluminum nut. All you have to do to assemble it is push in the nut first on this side. You can just like thread it into your M5 and just push it in this way. There you go. And then once that's in there, just unscrew that. Anything with this type of finger mount, you can now just slot it in there and you can put your screw in and tighten it down. So at the bottom of the quad, you can mount the action camera here and you can mount it on the back too and have the camera facing backwards. But you see how there's like a dip. So what I'd like to use is like an M2 spacer that's provided. Just screw it in like that and use the M2 by six screw and just bolt it in till it's nice and tight. So now this way, you can put the camera in here. You know, you can get some really nice low shots. Yeah, so give it a try. I'm excited to see what you guys do with this frame. All right, so that's it guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. I poured my heart and soul into the design of this frame. I sincerely hope when you fly it, you'll feel it too. And if you want to build it just like mine, you can find all the links in the description below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. All right, so take the light par and just shove it in the hole. I'm trying to say that with a straight face right now. And then take the other, take the other end of the light bar and shove it in the other hole. Okay, it's the same hole, but you just gotta shove the <laughs> you just gotta shove the whole thing in, man. <laughs> All right, so what I would do is take <laughs> I would take the tip and shove it in. <laughs> God, how do, you, how do you say this? All right, so just take the tip and sh so just take the tip and shove it in the hole and take the other tip and shove it in the hole. <laughs> All right, so the rest of it, you know, you can use your finger or use a tool to help you shove it in the hole.